channel. Welcome back to my channel. So, this channel has been embarking on my career as a caregiver from the past up until now. Um, I've been a caregiver for about 15 years. I've had several different clients, but for the most part, I've always dealt with more so elderly. I love elderly. If you like these videos that I've been putting please out, please subscribe, comment, like, and share these videos to all of our friends and family <laughs> because I am having so much fun doing these videos. I really think that it, it kind of fuels my my fire a little bit it kind of gets me thinking back to back it's exciting to think about my old clients even all the crazy stuff that might have happened with them this video today though is going to be another tip video and it's going to be called caregiver etiquette i feel like this topic is so important because i am kind of dealing with this right now i really feel like there is a need for me to talk about this because it is just, it's very frustrating when you put out your all and other people don't. Like, it's, it's very frustrating. But I'm going to go in order and then maybe I'll tell you about what I'm going through at the these end. These are the things that you want to look for in a caregiver and these are the things that, and I'm going to talk about some do's and don'ts as well. Let's jump right into it. Uh, so the first thing I want to, you know, kind of put out there is when you are on your way to work, okay or before you even leave your house <laughs> just make sure that you have everything you need make sure you brought your lunch you know a lot of people us caregivers and and healthcare professionals we do not take care of ourselves make sure you have a lunch make sure you have a snack make sure you have your water or whatever it is that you drink make sure you have all of that together and i'm going to tell you why like sometimes i forget my water and then i'm at my client house like ugh. Because a lot of times you don't want to ask them for their bottle of water or their water. You don't want to do that because it's kind of unprofessional just a little bit. Even though it's water, it depends on your relationship with that client and that family. But you want to just make sure you come in and you're prepared. You want to be headed to work on time. Because you don't want to rush. You don't want to be driving fast. You, you are somebody's relief person. You don't want them waiting on you. You don't want them not knowing whether you're coming or going if you are going to be late just just call just call okay so i'm going to say that that is like caregiver 101 if you are running late to your client's house give them a call or give the agency that you work with a call or the caregiver that you work with a call so that they know that you're still coming because sometimes when Hey, if I'm supposed to be off at 8 o'clock in the morning or if I'm supposed to be off and somebody's on their way and it's 8.02, I'm almost like, is she coming or is he coming? You don't know. So you want to go ahead and leave that communication open and let them know that you are on your way still. You get into that client's house. Start working. There is no reason why you need to go sit down or eat your breakfast or whatever. You need to come to that client's house ready to work, whatever time it is. If it's, I don't care if it's four o'clock in the evening and that caregiver that's already been there, been there from eight to four and you think they did everything, no ma'am. You need to, or no sir. <laughs> you need to come in and figure out what's gonna be for dinner, what's, whatever, whatever time it is. Even if it's 10 o'clock at night, what, where's the client at? You need to go check on your client. You always need to make sure that you come in ready to work. It's not time for you to do your own personal stuff when you get to your client house. Yes, you've been driving, but you just got to that client house. It's time to work. You're on their time now. Okay? So that is one of the, I mean, because like one of the things that I do when I walk into my client's house, I'm looking at the floor. I'm trying to see what's on the floor. I'm looking at your dishes to see what's in the sink. I'm looking at your bed. If you out the bed already and your bed is not made, I'm on it. And mind you, this, I, these are things that I don't even do at home. But when you are on somebody else's time and on somebody else's dime, you need to come in ready to work. Okay? Caregiver. Let's say you come in, you're done with the work, you everything is done. Great. Find something to do with that client. Don't just sit there and let them watch TV or let them doze off. Like, it's so many things that you can Google, activities that you can do with elderly people color paint go outside take a walk do exercises something that will fuel them for the day something that is meaningful to that person go through their family albums ask them some questions have a conversation 
do something that they used to like to do take them somewhere take them for a ride if your agency is insured for you to do that because if you saw my last video sometimes you are not allowed to do that but when you are allowed to do that take them outside take them for a ride take them to the store take them anywhere Just let them sit there and waste away even if okay let's say they don't want to go outside that's cool find something in the house for them to do cards games sing word search reading read to them something or if you have the type of a uh, client where you just do the work and you go then then that's then that's one thing but if you are there for a long period of time you need to be you need to be doing something else with them okay so i'm just gonna put that out just sit them there and you on your phone scrolling and they're just <laughs> you cannot do that oh another caregiver etiquette now this one is a big one when you are in a house that shared like let's say that everybody's sharing the case together okay let's say we got somebody in the morning somebody in the evening somebody at night or somebody works three days and the other person works four days whatever it is my thing is this if if everybody is doing shared duties then the work can't be on one person right this is where I'm getting into my frustration because this is what's going on and happening to me right now. <laughs> and I'm trying. So if you are on a case and you are doing X, Y, and Z, like set that up. That's what you do on your days. And this is what this person do on their days. But their days and your days shouldn't mix or match. Like if this person is supposed to do the laundry on Tuesday and what Friday or whatever, and that's day days and you come in on a Saturday or something like that and that stuff is not done that's a problem for me okay that's a problem for me this is what I'm going through right now I have a case that I'm doing I have Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday and this lady has Monday Tuesday Wednesday however she's decided that she doesn't do showers she don't clean bathrooms and she she does nothing with the personal care and then now she don't even do laundry anymore so it's like, ma'am, what do you do when you come? Because every time I come, I'm given a shower. Um, I wash the clothes the last few weeks that I've been like, what do you do, ma'am? And it, and you know, my I asked my client, like, so what does she do when she comes? Oh, she makes she makes me breakfast. I'm like, what, a bagel and some coffee? Because that's all my client eat in the morning. Does she eat a bagel and coffee or a pancake and coffee or toast and coffee? It ain't like she doing like some real life cooking in here. So I'm sorry, y'all. I'm supposed to, this is supposed to be a caregiver edit, but this is part of it. This is part of it. Like you can't leave your work. Or I can't do all the work or no one person should do all the work. So when you come in on your day, you just make breakfast and you vacuum the floor real quick. And then you done. That's it. You don't, you don't clean the bathroom. You don't mop the floors. You don't give a shower. You, you're not doing anything. So it's like, mm-mm. I'm not allowed to keep letting that and It's ride. not fair. Like, it's not fair. It should not be on just one person. Shared duties should be shared amongst all the caregivers in the home on their days. And that needs to be established almost at the beginning. And I didn't think it was going to be like this. So I've just kind of been going with the motions. But now I'm starting to see a little pattern here. Like, uh, ma'am, you are not doing anything. And I am doing all the work. I mean, I leave out of there, y'all. I'm drenched in sweat because I done did a shower. And and, I, and if anybody know, when you do a shower, you almost like in the shower with the client. You in there. You're wet. You hot. You, I mean, it's crazy. And when you come, it's just, you do a couple things because you decided that you don't do all these other things. That's not fair to me. That's not fair to the client. That's not fair to the other caregiver that's in the home. It's just not fair. And I'm tired of it, okay? I'm tired of it. So that's why I decided to come on here and make this video today because it's like caregivers, come on now. You need to do what you wouldn't do at your house because come on now, we all don't just clean our house all day, every day. We don't, nobody does. I don't, I, 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 I leave my bed unmade most days. Sometimes I leave dishes in the sink, but very rarely. But 
Come on, when I come home and I'm like, ugh, these dishes in the sink, I gotta get them out. You know, you wanna get them dishes out the sink. So that, that's what you do to your clients. You don't leave dishes in the sink. You don't leave dishes in the dishwasher. And and that's something I do at home. Sometimes I leave the dishes in the dishwasher for a few days, maybe a week, I don't know. But do the things that you wouldn't do at home because this is somebody else's time, this is someone else's house, this is someone else's dime, all of that. So you need to do what you wouldn't do at home. And that's staying up on your clients, cleaning, vacuuming, mopping, washing dishes, cleaning out microwave, all that kind of stuff. Because again, it falls on another person. And it's just not fair. Me, I like to stay busy. When I'm at my client's house, I like to stay busy. So pardon me, when I get home, I'm, I have nothing left. I, my gas is gone. I, I'm out. <laughs> you know? And it's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. So that's why it's like if, if, if your fellow co-worker would kind of make things a little less hectic for you you don't have to leave out of that house ridiculously tired and upset and irritated right so come on caregivers let's let's be what we're supposed to be let's look at that care plan we need to follow that care plan the way it says it needs to be done okay so <laughs> caregiver etiquette Yes, so I wanted to give you guys an update on the coconut and hibiscus curl enhancing smoothie. This is that cream that I bought at Target. Not a big bottle or anything. It's a, kind of like a small little travel. Really bottle. liking how my hair is looking. So I just took my hair out. It's been twisted up for whew, since Saturday, Friday. Yeah, Saturday night was when I twisted my hair up and I just took it down today. So from Saturday to today is Thursday and I just took my curls out. I mean, I just took my twist out and I really like the definition that this cream has put into my hair, but I can't give it all the credit. I can't give it all the credit, but I can give it a little because my hair has never laid down. So oftentimes when I take my twist out out, my hair sticks up and I'm like, why are you sticking up? Like, why are you, why are you like this and not like I this? Do, I, I like a nice um, afro, like I do. Sometimes I like my hair to be kind of poofed up, but sometimes I just want my hair to just come down. Like it'll poof on its own because I don't wrap my hair up, up at night. So sometimes I will get like a poof and I kind of like it, but sometimes, but, but with the poof, it doesn't stay very long. I only get to wear that poof for a couple of days and sometimes I take it beyond a couple of days and then I'll be looking real fried. But I'm loving these curls because they're bouncy. They have some body to them and I love it. I like I like this. This is this is good. That I put this cream on it wasn't clean hair though. Not washed my hair. I have not washed my hair. My hair was still pretty clean so I was like mm, I'm not gonna you know wash it. I use that um, curl control, Salon Selectives curl control. I did use this, but again, this is that curl stretch cream. I didn't feel like it stretched my hair. I felt like as soon as I took my twist out, my hair was doing the this weird little, I can't explain it. It's like a, uh, instead of like this, it was like, uh, it still did that with this, right? But I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna wash my hair. I'm not flaky, I, it's not real dirty. So when I got this, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna twist up. But I'm really liking the results that I got. My hair is looking stretched. And this doesn't even say that it's stretch cream. This don't say nothing about stretching. But I feel like it's, it's got me stretched out with still some nice defined curls. Okay, and like I told y'all, I ain't about to be doing no hair on here. Okay, not doing no hair, but I will show you how these products in my hair, but I'm not doing no hair. <laughs> so anyway, that's that. I've been using my African black soap for the last three days. And I really do feel, I, I don't know if I showed you guys that I had broke out over here, but it is down some, like it's not, 
um, inflamed. It was inflamed when I think I showed you guys last time. It was really inflamed, but now it has gone down. It's not painful right here anymore. I feel like it's kind of coming to a head where it's going to get like dried up. And then maybe we can try to see about getting that, that mark off my face. I think the mark above it is not, I don't know what this, this is the bump y'all. This, I don't know what this is. It's like a mark on my face. I'm gonna have to investigate that another time. But anyway, feeling good, I guess. You know, and I also still been using those other products, vitamin C cream that I showed you all. And then my Rata and Co, the three things. It's like a spray, a cream, hyaluronic acid. So it's been doing okay. I still feel like, you know, my face is doing okay. Um, but I'm loving my hair today. I just took this out right before I decided to do this video. Some, it'll get some volume to it. But right now I'm just loving the fact that it moves. I'm still on my face care journey. I wanna show you guys like real close up after the 30 days of me using the African black soap to make sure that it's like really doing its job. I wanna see none of those marks on my face. Like that is the goal to have like no marks on my face or anything like that. So I'm just, we, we'll see. We so I wanna thank everybody for watching these videos. I, was, I wanna thank all my friends and family for the feedback that I've been getting on this channel. I can't tell if like people other than my friends and family have been watching, but I hope so. Keep watching because I got a lot more to share. I have some more stories. I got some more clients that you're gonna be like, what? <laughs> so I wanna tell you about some of my heartfelt um, stories about some of my clients that are still dear and near to my heart, um, still in contact with their families. It's super amazing. Like, I just love the fact that I can make these relationships and these connections with people. I mean, even um, one of the clients that I had, her daughter even referred me to like a cousin and I took care of that cousin until she passed on. And it just, like I said, it just really makes me feel so good that even 15 years later, people are still like, I want you to take care of my, I want, you know, it's, it's an amazing feeling. So stay tuned. It's gonna be more stuff going on on this page. It's gonna be some really nice stories, things that, you know, that I wanna talk about. So stay tuned. I cannot wait. I, this ride has been so much fun. I love talking about the past. And then today, I just couldn't stop talking about the future. I mean, not the future, but the present. <laughs> so stay tuned. I am so excited. Thank you so much. This is my own city. And thank you for watching us from Mommy's video.